Professor Dr. Abdul Wadud Chaudhary, sir. Honorable Chairperson, panelists, moderators, and the learned audience, uh, thank you uh, for coming in here and making our conference a success. My topic is management of hypertension in stroke. Now, we know that hypertension is first among the modifiable cardiovascular risk factors, and it is, accounts for around 10.4 million deaths, 218 million attributable disability adjusted life years worldwide. And for stroke, it's the most prevalent risk factor. And in some reports, it had been suggested that in 64% cases, it's one of the most important risk factors for a stroke. We know that the brain is a major end organ target for chronic hypertension that leads to increased risk of stroke and dementia. And the hypertension is strongly, independently, and linearly associated with the risk of stroke. And that the risk starts from the level of pressure of 110 over 75 above. So there is no pressure at which it cannot occur, but above that, it occurs more. We know that the stroke is the second most common cause of mortality worldwide, third most common cause of disability. One uh, learned professor said, stroke is not a disease, it's a disaster. We should remember that. There are three main types of stroke, ischemic, intracerebral hemorrhage, and subarachnoid hemorrhage. And these two are sometimes called, uh, termed as uh, hemorrhagic stroke. In the US, the proportion of these three are around 87%, 10%, and 3%. In Europe, more than 1 million people have a stroke every year. In 2025, this is supposed to rise to 1.5 million because the population is aging. And 70% stroke incidence, 87% stroke-related deaths happen in low and lower middle income countries like ours. And death rate is significantly higher in developing countries compared to the developed countries. What about Bangladesh? A nationwide prevalence study conducted by NINS under the guidance of Professor Khajiddin Muhammad showed prevalence of stroke in our country is about 11.39. If you consider the age more than 60 years, the prevalence is 30.10 per thousand. And less than 4.6 in less than 40 years. Male-female issue showed males are twice as likely to have a stroke than females. And among the risk factors, not 64%, in our country, hypertension is by far the most important cause, around 79.2%. Compare that to the other risk factors, dyslipidemia 38.9, tobacco use 37.2, diabetes around less than 30, ISD 20. So it's one of the most important risk factors, if we control it, regulate it, then we can reduce the prevalence of stroke in this country. And when discussing the pressure management, we have to know something about cerebral autoregulation. What is that? It's the mechanism by which cerebral blood flow remains constant across a wide range of cerebral perfusion pressure. You may have a pressure of 180 over 100. You may have a pressure of 100 over 60 but your cerebral blood flow and cerebral pressure may remain same. That's the mechanism God has put in there. It maintains a constant cerebral blood flow of around 50 ml per 100 gram of tissue per minute. And this is achieved by reflex vasoconstriction or vasodilatation of the cerebral arterioles in response to changes in the perfusion pressure. And remember that the cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to mean arterial pressure minus the intracranial pressure. What is the mean arterial pressure? It's the average pressure present throughout the cardiac cycle. How do we measure it? Diastolic pressure plus one third of uh, pulse pressure, or you can measure it systolic pressure plus twice the diastolic pressure, and the summation is divided by three. That's the mean arterial pressure. Cerebral blood flow, we know that the cerebral uh, perfusion pressure and vascular resistance control that. And the vascular resistance is governed primarily by arteriolar diameter. So our body can maintain a mean arterial pressure of 50 to 60 millimeter mercury to 150 to 160 millimeter mercury. That's the target. If it is beyond that, the cerebral autoregulation fails. And therein lies the problem. 
So whenever we have raised uh, uh, blood pressure, there will be vasodilation to shift the car to the left. And when there is vaso uh, pressure is raised, there will be vasoconstriction. In chronically hypertensive patient, this autoregulation curve is shifted to the right. So the mean arterial pressure will be always raised. The lower and upper limits are here, higher than normal individuals. So enormous central blood flow and oxygen, oxygen consumption are maintained at the expense of a marked increase in the central vascular resistance in a chronically hypertensive patient. Look at this one. What about ischemic penumbra? Tissue with the lowest central blood flow will be irreversibly damaged in a stroke patient, and that constitutes the core of the infarct. The region surrounding the core is the penumbra. And that are ischemic and dysfunctional, but potentially salvageable if you can do the reperfusion in time. The hypothesis suggested if we reduce the BP too much in the setting of acute ischemic stroke, it may worsen the hyperperfusion in the penumbra. And that may lead to extension of the infarct. But again, <coughs> we know that. They, if we do not control the pressure, there will be extension of the infarct may be there, or it may turn into a hemorrhagic infarct. So any fall in blood pressure may precipitate ischemia, while an increase may lead to edema and hemorrhagic transformation. We have to walk a tight rope, control the pressure in a controlled way. What is the risk of hypertension as a risk factor? How, how great is the risk? People with hypertension are four times more likely to suffer from stroke. Higher the BP, higher the risk of stroke. 10 millimeter increase in systolic blood pressure increases the risk of stroke by 38%. And we have already mentioned that it's a great risk factor. Lower BP reduces the stroke. And the relative risk is 0.50 at a pressure of 136 over 84. While compared to that, the relative risk is 0.35 when the pressure is 1 times 23 over 76. Both these pressures are lower than the 140-90 cutoff point. Still then, lower the BP, better the outcome for primary prevention. But in acute ischemic area, arena, there is some problem. Hyperation leads to oxidative stress, bioreflex dysfunction, inflammation. All these are mechanisms by which the arterioles are damaged and that lead to increased chance of stroke. Uh, this pathophysiology has show, is showing oh. high blood pressure. There's some fibrinoid necrosis, occlusion, small vessel disease. And these are the factors. Small vessel occlusion leads to lacunar infarct and progressive dementia. And intracranial atherosclerosis primarily infarct the dead vessels, the extracranial, intracranial, carotid arteries, vertebral arteries, they lead to bigger area of stroke. And these two. So the target for secondary prevalence, the studies have shown, if it is less than 130, that's the target to prevent cerebral hemorrhage. And less than 140, 90, reduce the stroke, ischemic stroke uh, uh, incidence. But if it's less than 120 systolic pressure, there is not much benefit. So reducing pressure too much is not going to benefit anybody. So decrease the ischemic stroke until systolic blood pressure lowering is 140-90. But increase the ischemic stroke if you lower it too much. In general, if the patient have carotid artery atherosclerosis, do not lower it too much. If the patient has lacuna stroke, lower it. If the patient has hemorrhage, we can lower it. High blood pressure leads to stroke in three ways. Blood clots in the brain, damage the tiny blood vessel because the perforator that goes into the deep inside the brain tissue at the right angle, and that are very much prone to changes in the blood pressure. High blood pressure damages them too much. And bleeding in the brain. So what about the ischemic stroke? For all stroke subtype, hypertension is the most important factor. And 
Artery sclerosis of penetrating blood vessel is involved in the pathogenesis of white metal lesion. And these white metal lesions are lacunary in fast and that lead to progressive dementia. And that's important because controlling pressure not only reduces stroke, it also reduces the incidence of uh, dementia down the downstream. And as a cause for hemorrhagic stroke, hypertension alone or in combination is most important, more than 80% of cases. An odds ratio for developing intracranial hemorrhage in patients with hypertension is 3.7, and it increases with the risk with the level of pressure. The risk is 2.2 for high normal BP, 5.3 stage 1 hypertension, 10.4 stage 2 hypertension, 33 relative risk for stage 3 hypertension. And what about acute intracranial hemorrhage state, acute stage? Hematoma expansion is more common in hypertensive intracranial hemorrhage compared to those related to amyloid angioplasty, 45% versus 19%. Neurological deterioration is more. Cerebral edema and perihematomal edema are also more if you have higher BP. And also, it's also related to higher death rate. Now, diastolic BP, what about that? Diastolic BP, 110 milliliter mercury, has 13 times more risk of stroke compared to diastolic pressure less than 80. So it's also important. Now, the prospective population with Copenhagen City Heart Study reported that systolic BP is a better predictor of stroke than diastole. In general, for younger patients, diastolic pressure is important. Above 40 and above, the systolic pressure is more important. And systolic pressure is, as a whole, better predictor of a stroke than the diastolic pressure. And the management is complex. It depends upon the varied etiopathology of a stroke itself. So we need an accurate diagnosis and precise definition of the therapeutic goal. In general, a meta-analysis have suggested if you reduce the systolic pressure by 10 meter mercury, there is a 27% risk reduction that the patient is going to have a stroke in future. And acute hypertensive response is common with an ischemic stroke. And usually it's self-limiting. That goes, goes back to normal within the week. But since the, if the response is too much, that will lead to more damage. So we have to be careful. We have to know that the normotensive, previously normotensive patient may have acute ischemic response, hypertensive response. If we treat it too much, that may lead to expansion of the stroke. Again, if we do not treat it, if the pressure is too high, that can also lead to damage to the patient. According to AHAS guidelines, early treatment is indicated in patients with severe acute comorbidity. So if you have a stroke with aortic dissection or acute coronary syndrome, or if it, there is post-streptokinase, uh, post-thrombolysis intracranial hemorrhage, or hypertensive emergency, including eclampsia or preeclampsia, you have to treat the pressure according to those comorbidities guidelines, not according to stroke guidelines. But it is, in general, it's safe to lower the blood pressure around 15% from baseline. Studies have shown if you reduce it acutely, 20% or more, there is increased problem. But if you reduce it 15%, it's safe. 15 to 20% may not be any harm. In patients with systolic pressure less than 220, 120, we may not need to start treatment in case of ischemic stroke in the initial 48 to 72 years, 72 hours. If it is more than systolic 220 or diastolic 120, you have to reduce the pressure by at least 15%. But when the patient is stable neurologically and the pressure is more than 140-90, you can start treatment. There is not progression of any symptoms. Patient is stable. It's more than 72 hours. You can reinitiate or initiate treatment. So hypertensive emergency, treat according to the comorbidity guideline. If we want to give thrombolysis, then the pressure should be less than 185, 110. And if the pressure is the ischemic stroke, we do not give any thrombolysis. We have to reduce the pressure at least 15%. Okay. 
কি যাচ্ছে না কেন ইন জেনারেল কেস ফ্যাটালিটি ইন অ্যাকুইটি স্কিমিং টু ফলো ইউ শেপ কার্ভ রিগার্ডস হায়ার ডেথ ইজ এ টু লো ও টু হাই বিপি সো টার্গেট প্রেশার এজ আই হ্যাভ অলরেডি টোল অ্যান্ড লেবেটাল লো লাইন নিকারডিপিন টু ইন্টারভেনাস হাইটি হাইপারটেন্সিভ আর দ্য ফার্স্ট চয়েস If the pressure is too low, some studies suggest should we increase it a little bit. Now it is suggest give volume. Better not to use any inotrope. But if you want to use it, use it very cautiously. Hemorrhagic stroke, intercanular hemorrhage is a subarachnoid hemorrhage. place uh, yeah we the target is to reduce the hematoma expansion and perihematoidal edema prevent rebleeding improve the function and outcome and what should be the target the target should be acutely we should reduce the pressure in case of hemorrhagic stroke around 14090 it has been shown the best outcome when the pressure is between 140 to 180 The U-shaped curve shows lowest on the study showed the lo best least complication is when the pressure system pressure is 150. So that the, the, the guidelines are suggesting you can reduce it by 140-90. Factors associated to rebreeding are particularly important: the higher blood pressure. So acute lowering of blood pressure to 140 is safe can be effective for improving functional outcome, and. The new, uh, neurocritical society suggests mean arterial pressure should be less than 110. Europeans suggest you can reduce the pressure less than 140 by within six hours. That's the graph showing the target pressure to prevent stroke and get the best outcome. And we should not for, never forget the other important goals of treatment. So hypertension is the strongest inspector of stroke. And the treatment goal should be individualized according to stroke type, comorbidities, reperfusion strategies. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your nice presentation.